Hi guys, welcome to another Keyshot tutorial. My name is Liam Martin and in this video I'm going to show you how to add falling rain into your scene in Keyshot. Now for those of you that saw my floating dust tutorial, you will realize some, that there's some similarities in the methods and that's because we will be using flakes in the material graph again to put particles in the air. So on that note, do remember that you need to be using Keyshot version 8 or above to achieve this as I do it. I have tried this method out in both light and dark scenes and it works fairly well in both. But bear in mind that it's easier to see the rain particles in a darker scene with some very intense lighting, so it might be easier to kind of get the effect right in a scene like I'm using today. Let's jump into it. Okay, so I'll start with a quick scene tour. At the center, we've got this awesome Lamborghini model that I got from GrabCAD. I'll leave the link to that down below. If I go to my free camera, we've got this ground plane here, which is specular set to white for the reflections. And we've got these four area lights that are casting down onto it. They're going to really help to illuminate the rain, get some nice reflections, help us judge how much rain in there and the size of it. So that's why I said it's important. If you're going to struggle with it, it's easier in a dark scene with some bright lights. The effect's going to be easier to achieve. To add in the rain, you need to go to Edit, Add Geometry, and Cube. You can hit the tick on this Move Toolbox there. Hit O on the keyboard to open up the Geometry view. Go to your Scene window, and then we're going to position this cube and scale it so that it covers the entire scene, um, anything you can see, definitely. So I'm going to increase the scale this way to cover us horizontally, and then increase the scale of mine all the way up to where the camera is so that we've got rain coming all the way up to the lens. When you're happy with that, exit that view. Then you want to search for the liquid water material in the material library. Click and drag that onto the cube, and then jump in to edit that material. It's really handy that Keyshot has a preset for liquid water so we don't have to bother changing any of the settings here. We know they're going to be fine for the end effect. Jump into the material, the material graph, right click, go to geometry and flakes, right, uh, click and drag this into the geometry terminal of the root node, double click on flakes. I recommend for the size going between 1.5 and 3 millimeters, so I'm going to go sort of in the middle at 2. I'm going to add in a little bit of size variation of 0.5. The density, I think it works best from 0.01 to 0.015. So I'm going to go at the upper end of that. I'm going to raise my flake limit to 1. This is measured in millions. So we've got 1 million um, sort of headroom for Keyshot to populate with flakes. And then I'm just going to hit Execute Geometry Node. And that will bring in our rain. So that's the first step done. Like I said, we don't need to bother with any of this. You could change the refractive index if you want it to uh, refract more light and be brighter, but I'm just going to leave that as standard. Now we need to bother with um, animating the light so we get motion blur on it so that it looks like it's falling. So I'm going to go to animation, go to animation wizard, translation, next, uh, select my cube and go next again. In the Translate Y, I'm going to raise it by 5,000. Um, I've got my scene unit set as millimeters, so 5,000 millimeters or 5 meters. Finish. We don't need to worry about the length of this too much, but we do need to mirror it. So right-click and mirror. And this is what we need to concern ourselves with this second motion, which is the rain falling. So I'm just going to make this one shorter. So in this opening animation, the rain goes up 5 meters. And then in the next bar, it's going to fall down 5 meters. You want to make sure this icon here is blue. That's going to activate motion blur. And in the drop down box next to it, you want to make sure that you've got the tick box set for models and parts. So this rain in this sequence is going to right, go up five meters and then down five meters. I recommend if you choose five meters as your settings to make this uh, second one about the length of four seconds and then bring the cursor to the end of it. And then what you'll see if you focus on a certain bit of it, uh, it gets quite intense. So I'm just going to uh, bring the render region down to this bit. But as it renders out, you'll see that we've got trails behind the rain. So the flakes that were little particles are now stretched out. So you can see we've got these vertical lines shooting up from each one, which is the effect of falling rain. I'm just going to hide this now and worry about the ground plane. So it's really easy for me because I've got a dark scene and I can basically got a mirror here. I'm going to edit this material, go to textures, 
and then I'm going to bring in this rain ripple bump texture. I'll leave the link to this down below. I got it online and this is perfect for falling rain um, landing on a surface. I'm going to drag that into the bump texture. I can go to the material graph and preview it by hitting C on the keyboard. You can see that the ripples are massive. So I'm going to decrease the ripple size to 1.5 meters, 1500 millimeters. You can see now we've got more realistic size for the ripples and I'm going to raise the bump height to two. Exit the preview. I'm going to jump back into my render region and go down here, let this render out a little bit. And as it renders out, you can see that we've got nice little rain ripples on the ground plane, which are really convincing to the end effect. That is it for the tutorial, guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, get subscribed, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. If you do share this work on Instagram, remember to tag me at LDMartin so I can see the work you've done. For now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.